check back with another episode of the DJ's Need Love 2 show hosted by me, DJ Badio. I got my brother. I got a very special guest in the building, DJ Starks, my yo, boy. Yo, 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 what's up, bro? Stizzy. <laughs> we go back. We go way, way back, man. That's a fact. That's a fact. Man, we branching into the New York City series, man. I got one of the most popular, most famous blue check djs in the building man you know dj Starks. if you ever watched any of my episodes i mentioned him as one of my top five djs you definitely inspire me thank you brother you know that because i'm definitely one that text all call you and let you know that every time i see something you do something yes, you do. proud you know what i mean yes, and i appreciate you bro i appreciate you coming through on your busy schedule getting here not a problem and letting the people here man the djs need love too show man of course of course man you know i had to come bless the bless the mic real quick bless the studio you know what i mean um, I'm, I'm very proud of you by the way appreciate you, you man know, i see what you got going on and it's a beautiful thing you know you um bringing the people together for the culture you know um and this is this is what we need right right you know I, mean? I, I love it man stock so let's take it back now because stocks does a lot of different things now man yeah. but we're going to take it back to the dj element okay the, the real dj element i'm talking about 2003 2005 going up okay uh, all the way up what was it like going being in those clubs you know what i'm saying being one of the most booked you booked five. I seen you on seven different flyers. Right. It's two different two clubs was not going to get booth. I mean, um, booth or Starks or Novocaine right. or um, DJ Ceremony. Shout out to all my New York City DJs. Right. If it's one of y'all DJs that was not going to pull up, you know what I'm saying? And y'all was on many flyers. So how was that like back in those days? Oh man, you know it, it, it was a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I must say, um, when I look back at it, it was definitely. Um, you know, it it was it was a rush. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, just coming out. Just doing something that you love as a hobby, right, right. you know, out, out, your, out your project windows, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. um, you know, and one day to just be, you know, scouted by someone and they give you a chance and, yeah. then, you know, you just let the talents just speak for itself. And that's pretty much what it was, man. You know, I just just got my chance and I just, you know, worked on my craft. I perfected my craft, of course. 100. And, um, you know, just kept on going, man. I stayed humble and stayed hungry. You know, and kept my prices reasonable. <laughs> you know? Definitely stayed humble and hungry, you know, because I used yeah. to watch your stuff. I used to watch your videos. You used to practice. I used to watch your practice videos like, yo, I need to finish what I'm doing so I can go ahead and, and do this shit. And, right, right. you know, Starks is much younger than me, man. But, right. you know, the inspiration doesn't have no age on it, right, bro. Right, like, right. he was just killing New York City. Yeah. Everywhere in New York City. Yeah. In particular, Brooklyn, you know, because, you know, we're from Brooklyn. We're from the city, you know what I'm saying? We grew up in the same projects, Linden Projects. Yes, sir. Yes, came sir. over there and just took over took over the scene. And I want to shout out to your boy, uh, Diddy. Yes, sir. I want to shout out Diddy Run the City. My boy. Because the way um, you guys took over the city as a team, mm -hmm. yeah. talk about that real quick. Like, how did you guys think about that and just mastermind that? Um, it was very organic, man. It was organic. I was actually booked for... Um, an event that he had at um what was that club exit that was like one of the premier spots out there so wait 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 did he had another dj before stocks um he was actually booking yeah he he used to rock with booth um, okay he definitely rock with booth i believe he he was managing hot rod at one point dj hot rod from um from queens yeah I okay say. that's a hot rod yeah so yeah that was a while back um yeah. did he did he put some work in yeah I yeah fuck with nah, nah, did he did he definitely cancer you know? shout out to the cancer yeah, yeah he put his work in yeah. you know um and that particular party it was me and booth okay so did he used to always keep his dj lineup like really really you know yeah you know what i'm saying he didn't have a bunch of people it was like i right, if i you know two djs at the most the most you know, yeah three that's a because I tried to get in Diddy team. <laughs> Diddy is tight right now, Vadio. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was like, I, yeah. I respect it. Yeah, you know. Um, and I was actually booked to be uh, the reggae DJ for the night. Okay. Um, you know, I played everything. And um, oh yeah. You know, uh, my my homegirl Free, she she hit me up and was like, yo, you know, I know a guy who needs a DJ yeah. for reggae. I told him, I, I'm like, all right, cool, I'll do it. You know, um, I came in the club. It was retarded that night. It's ca crazy. Me and Diddy was just talking about this a couple of days ago. This is but, the um, behind the scenes <laughs> DJ Stark series, man. Yeah. This is the <laughs> only on the DJ's Need Love 2 yeah. show, man. Yeah, man. Because um, these people done made hundreds and hundreds of thousands and put money in so many people in the yeah, city. Definitely. But this is the how it started. Let's definitely. finish. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. So I pretty much I pulled up to the spot. You know, it was a lit night, sold out night. Um, and I was like I said, I was supposed to play the reggae for the night. Yeah. And uh, Booth was getting off or whatever, and I was like, yo, you know, uh, he was like, nah, just go in. Yeah. Just go in. I'm like, yo, but son, booked me. He was like, son, 
Listen, it's it's time to go in. Like it, so, you know, you know, it was one of those. Who told you that, Booth or Booth, Diddy? Yeah, Booth. Booth, yeah. Booth, Booth, yeah. He's, he told me straight up. He like, yeah. yo, don't do that. Don't do it to yourself. Don't come in here playing no reggae. It's yeah, time. And it was a hip hop party. Okay, you know what I mean, it was an urban party. You know what I mean? Um, so he was right. You know, so whatever was hot at the time, I can't remember. I just started going in. Right. And pretty much from that point forward, man, Diddy, he stayed in contact with me. Yeah, you know, he stayed in contact with me. He just kept booking me. Um, he the first party that we did was I love the city Saturdays at Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. At Fahrenheit. God, so, man, these is memories, yeah. man. This is <laughs> this is the show right here. This is yeah. the show, man. Yeah, yeah. We did that. It was me. Um, cause y'all gotta understand something, man. This is like I'm, we, he's talking about the making of why everybody had so much fun back in the days. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. it was Diddy and Stark's parties we went to. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it right. went from. Being a DJ to y'all throwing your own shit, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, yeah, that that yeah, pretty much, man. You know, um, I I pretty much headlined the the, the night. Right, it was um Reef. He was one of the promoters. Shout out to DJ Big Reef. Yeah, Big Reef was one of the promoters slash DJs. Yeah, he would open up and he'd play the R and B. You know, he yeah, he still he was always the R and B guy. Yeah, um, kills him. Yeah, um. I want to say I played twice. I want to say I probably got on after him. Okay. Um, and then Alpo. At the time, she had the Alpo. Alpo was like heavy reggae. Yeah, he was just straight reggae. He oh was, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, Alpo. He he. I never. It wasn't until he got to Atlanta until I actually heard I, him play. I just about to say that. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know he I was to say yeah, he be on his hip hip yeah. shit out here in Atlanta. He but I know it. him from New York, Coney Island. Right, exactly. Doing shit at the at the, uh, the surf shit back in the day. Right, yeah. and he was heavy reggae. Like he was just he was that reggae guy. So yeah. he would come on, then I would get back on and you know finish the night. And that was pretty much it, man. I just did every Saturday and then so forth and so on. You know, we just started throwing more parties together. And me and Diddy, we just form the group together you know what i mean without even kind of without even saying anything it was just most 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 like an organic yeah. thing you know and i always do my own events yeah so when we did it together we bought his people but my people yeah we bought it together and it was like you know it was really really explosive man it was it was massive what we had going on Dope. because we both had a heavy heavy um heavy yeah man it, that, it, we're it, not even gonna sugarcoat yeah, it. it heavy was, in it was, the city it was heavy it anything was heavy. anybody wanted to party you was definitely at these dudes yeah. parties man you were spending money yeah you're doing the packages and all that you know what i mean and what we did different i want to say is we kept it in house. Mm -hmm. we kept a lot of stuff in house. We did book other DJs. I was the main right. attraction, of yeah. course. I headlined most of you know almost every party, ninety nine yeah. percent of the parties, and we had um, we you, were the young guys who bought host. Yeah. So a lot of people wasn't bringing host at that time. Only like the older guys they okay. were doing host and stuff like that. And we would bring, I mean, we would bring in everybody. You know what I'm saying? We definitely had the A-list a, a -list yeah. celebrities or whatever, you know, Nicki Minaj, all kind of people. Yeah, I yeah, could, yeah. I could go on and on. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, definitely, yeah. But then we did a lot of B, C, D class artists as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We had from Sheik Looch to Cassidy. Yeah. To, you know what I mean? Anybody to just... It's just facts, man. Keep it's a name, just, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying, and it and it helped us, you know. It helped brand us, yeah. you know. And we booked a, a radio DJ every now and then, or whatever. Yeah. Shout out to Absolute. Absolute was like the one Queens, the yeah. One um radio DJ. He was on Hot 97 at the time. Oh yeah. He used to show us love on the radio and stuff like that. So yeah, man. It was so we're gonna do the radio. We're gonna go to radio real quick, but we want to talk Shutdown Brothers because we still back in the days right okay. now. So cool. the Shutdown Brothers. Who was in Shutdown Brothers? Um, it was show off Castro. Shout to Castro. My show. shout to Castro, man. Yeah, yeah. Super dope, it's, it's professional boy, DJ. Yeah, he's doing his he thing. Knows music, man. Yeah, 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 he's doing his thing now, man. Um, myself, um, DJ O. Shout to O. Uh, I want to say Black Bush. Yeah, definitely. Um, DJ G Money from Queens. Mm -hmm. He was a shutdown brother, DJ Sleepy from Brownsville. Sleepy, yeah. Sleepy's um, dope as hell. Sammy Bravo. Sleepy don't say nothing on the mic. I don't know if he still like that, but that was this is we we still back in the day. You know what I mean? Well, back then, actually, back then, Sleepy was actually the one man army. He yeah, did, he did. He 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 was one. I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a buck. He was one of the very first um djs that i looked up to okay you know what i'm saying that yeah. i that i started keying into and i was like yo you know i, I want to be like him okay you know what i'm saying he was one of them um 
he was actually the first guy to to, to uh you know he he gave me a boost out in the elks that was the person when i started doing the elks plaza shout to the was, elks plaza yo yeah, it was it was sleepy because sleepy was booked up he was booked up in there like every weekend you know what i mean and i introduced myself to him and i think i did a party one time and i and i wanted to book him okay so i got his number and um you know, from there, I I just network with him, and he was like, "Yo, bring your CDs, you yeah, know, come down, bring bring your bring your book." Uh, I'm like, "All right, cool." You know, and um, I would just watch, I would just watch how he control the party. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He was um Island Superior, I believe he's still Island Superior at the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so the Island Superior, they was there, and they was doing their thing, and you know, like I said, I was always a student of the game. Yeah, and you know, Sleepy was always good. He was definitely he's a turntabler, so he was good with the scratching. Yeah, he was good with the blending. He was good with getting the you know the party hype you right. know, with the ladies and all that and um yeah you know so yeah he's definitely was always a guy that, that spoke on the mic and 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 i didn't necessarily talk on the mic at those times okay you know what i mean i had to build confidence because i wasn't as confident to speak on the mic or whatever the case you know okay. and i think it was mainly because i wanted to perfect the music first yeah you know what i mean i think sometimes people they skipping steps yeah ex- exactly you yeah. know what i'm saying they try to imitate what they see and it's like yo bro if you're not comfortable yet with this then we can't go on to that because your energy on the mic while scratching like right like, right right over like, time you know what i mean like, it, i know it's it, over time yeah, but it it's like yo time. like damn it was like yo, this, this is how you do this shit you know what i'm saying at, at the at a level where it's supposed to be heard this yes. is how you do this shit this is how it's supposed to sound you know what i'm saying yes sir so let's talk clubs okay the lab you did the lab right fahrenheit right um club eugene's right um what's the best club you did and i'm talking back in those days still we ain't we know we're near where we at right now because i'm talking about a legendary time in brooklyn party scene when people were actually dancing and that's gonna be another question i ask you okay you know what i'm saying so what's the best club you did on i'm gonna say man hands down elks plaza bro. elks man hands down you know that spot made me man those are the fab days yeah. man yeah yeah that spot made me, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, a lot of my peers, they went there. You know, I was still in high school when I was started DJing. There, yeah. You know, and, um, you know so I, I created a, a, a crazy fan base because I was always popular in school. I played football in my high school. You know, I always knew a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I went to Lincoln. So being from East He's New from York. from East New York. Yeah, there right. you go. Yeah. Being from East New York and, and, and going to Lincoln, which was all the way across town, Coney mm-hmm. Island. You meet so many people all in between. Okay, you know what I mean. So it's it's like shout out to Lincoln. Yeah, it's like a two hour ride from one side to the other. Right. You know I mean? Even though it's still in Brooklyn, but um, that just goes to show for the people that don't know that there's so many different hoods. Yeah. Hoods rather um in between, and I knew a lot of people from just even being just by me going to that school on mm-hmm. the other side. I always say that to myself, like, yeah. yo, I could have went to Jeff, could have went to Max, right, Miller, right, could have went to Canarsie, his own school or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that I went to a school that wasn't my zone and was on the other side i think that helped me because i was able to know people in every different hood you know what i'm saying once i actually started to promote and throw parties and stuff like that i started getting people from 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 everywhere from mm-hmm. j- just my core people so the elks would hold the, the top floor would hold let's say three four hundred people piece, yo. you know what i'm saying so that's three four hundred people from all over yeah you know what i mean so i i must say man that that spot it was def- that was it, bro. I definitely want to let you know that me being included, a lot of people have stolen, and it's not stolen when you're talking to the DJ world. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of sets mm-hmm. that you have done, a lot of DJs do to this day. Right. And um, I've definitely taken a lot of sets from you, and I don't mind right. saying it on my right. own show, you know not what I'm saying? Problem, bro. And it's because it's like that energy, that feeling will never go. Right. Sometimes when I just want to like... When I'm just like in a rush, when I want to go in the bag, I just go like, all right, this is some set I used to do back in 2001, right. you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And yo, you dope as fuck for that shit, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, like I said, I'm excited. I got DJ Thanks. Stocks on yes. the booth, in the, in the, in the booth right yes. now. You understand yes, what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Let me ask you this question. Okay. What's the favorite set to play in the club? My favorite set, man. I would say. You're a Brooklyn DJ. We're in Atlanta right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right now, we could, now we could go current. What's your favorite set to play right now? Ah oh, man, I'm I'm be honest with you, bro. Like I like, I like to open. You know what I mean? As weird as it may seem and sound, as a headliner DJ, I do like to open because when you open, you can, you set the tone of the party. Number one, you know what I mean, and you can pretty much play almost anything that you like. Got you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And 
luckily for me, a lot of stuff that I like are popular songs that other people like as well. Right. You know what I mean? And um, you know, I, I, I don't like to play everything that everybody else is playing typically. Yeah. So that's what always made me a bit different, that I have like certain records that you know, that's how I know like when a DJ <laughs> will bite my, you know, yeah. some of my, my joints because I'm a per like I'm like, oh I'm like very the one of the very few that know that record or play that record. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And um, you know, I've heard people do it and then they, they seen how the reaction that I got and yeah. they thought that they was gonna get, get the, the same, same reaction. reaction. Yeah. And they don't because it's like, you know, you gotta play these songs a certain kind of way. In a certain way you know and got, mean? yeah, yeah. At a certain time in a certain way. Right. You know what I mean? You gotta drop it a certain way, you gotta say the right thing sometimes, you know what I mean? So, you know, typically man, I you know, and I'm I won't say I'm stuck in the past, but the nineties and early two thousands are like my yeah. favorite. That's when you get in your bag music. back. Like that's that's when the stalks come out of you. Cause, yeah. Cause you know, you be you be the you know, regular DJ and right. I, I now it's, I need to turn up. Right. So that's that's the set you go to when you wanna yeah. because you one of the dopest reggae DJs ever in the motherfucking city. Yeah. But Thank so you but this is what he's going on record saying right. the two thousands and it's his favorites at the club. Play. Most definitely. I got you, man. Yeah. So right now, what's the biggest flex you got right now as a DJ? The biggest flex. You know, you've been doing a lot of shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can give me any answer because I'm looking for a in particular answer. Okay. But what's your favorite flex right now? That as far as me as being a DJ? As a DJ. From all your years of DJing. How many years do you have DJing as first? Oh, man. Whoa. 15 plus. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. Um, I was like in like seventh, eighth grade or something like that yeah. when I started. So I was like 13, 34 now. So whatever that math is. Yeah. So from going on tour, from DJing for Fab, for DJing from different artists, right. from owning restaurants now, mm -hmm. what's the biggest flex you got from DJing? Man, um, I, I see. I, you see, how I just <laughs> threw that in there just now, right? Yeah, yeah. So. All right, let me. So I I, I want to understand your actual question. So like, break it down. What do you, What are you asking me to answer? So as a DJ right now, as a DJ right now, what's the biggest event you did as a DJ? The biggest event I've yeah. done. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna generalize oh, it to that. Man, right? um, I've done. Yeah, you've yeah, done a lot. I've done a lot. So yeah, I've, I've one of my um dopest moments was with Fab. We did um Howard Homecoming. Yeah, I always heard. You know, you heard Biggie say it in the rhyme. Yeah, and stuff like that. You know, it's legendary. It's a yeah. legendary, legendary um. Um, platform, you know what I mean? All right. And I think that night it was me, Fab, uh, that's when he had Goyard back, so a little Uzi came out. Yeah. Um, Wale, you know, he's from D.C., yeah. so he came out on the stage. That was real dope. It yeah. Was, that was really dope for me. Right. You know so um, I would say that... Um, it was a lot, man. I've done a lot. Yeah, I've that's what I'm saying. I wanted to know because yeah, you've yeah. done a lot. I've done a lot. Of I mean, you know, like this. I'm a New York City. I know I live in Atlanta. I'm a New York City DJ. Right. I've seen um, one of my favorite artists is Joel Santana's. You've done right. events with Joel. Yeah. You've done an event with Nicki Minaj. Right. That's why I asked you that one question. It was like, I've seen Stocks done so much. He's inspired so many DJs to do this shit as a career. Right. Because you can, for one, take care of a family. Mm-hmm. And then grow from another thing, so that was that. That's a dope flex, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've okay. seen you with a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? But that's just right. in one particular. Yeah. Well, if you, you was like the that, first yeah. DJ to bring Nicki Minaj to Brooklyn, he didn't say that flex. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was looking <laughs> was for that? one in particular. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. First you know, DJ you know me. Yeah. I don't really, you yeah. know, I don't boast and brag a lot. Yeah, yeah. Nah, stuff, nah, nah. You know, this is the platform. This is the DJs so, Need Love Two show. Um, yeah. Talk your shit. Yeah. yeah we yeah. definitely Diddy and myself. Um, yeah. We 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 bought Nicki Minaj. We were the first. We was the first ones first. to bring her to New York City. Yes. In itself, this is before she had a, a record. Let's talk street promoters first. Um, Promote a DJ team yeah. to bring Cassidy to the city. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? To bring Jim Jones to the city. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, we did, a, we did a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. I'm like, you got these DJs that moved to Atlanta from New York. They've been inspired by the same names that you hear in all these shows. DJ right. Starks. Right. DJ Novocaine, DJ Boof, it's all the same DJs. You know what I'm saying? Right. It ain't. You don't have to go too popular when you come to New York. Yeah, you gotta fuck with them street DJs because the street DJs, man, they, mm -hmm. they teach you some shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, we 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 set the tone. You know, yeah. what I mean, it's it's the street DJs who who set the tone. We know what's happening. We know what's hot. Right. You know what I mean, especially somebody like myself, I've I've broke a lot of records. Yeah, you know I mean, um. Uh, you know, from Millie Rock to so yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, if you oh, all right. So yeah, look, 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 right. it's thought, in the I paper. Thought, you know, what we saying? was going. Uh, it's in the paper. <laughs> nah, so uh, I mean, Brooklyn. You okay. know, definitely Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, Bobby Smurda. 
all the big Brooklyn, Brooklyn artists. Yeah. They come to certain DJs. Mm -hmm. They don't even go to the celebrity DJs first. Right. They come to certain DJs. Millie Rock was one definitely a record that you definitely broke in the city. You know what I'm saying? Um, shit, I'm I'm had you had on that shit, mm -hmm. Millie Rock. You know what I'm saying? Then you hear from the radio DJs. Right. So, how do you feel about breaking records and not really getting credit for it? Because this is the DJs Need Love Two show. Right. So, um, now you know why um people have packages now when they want to play their songs in the club or send me a song or right. DJs have packages now because of this reason. Right. I, I I actually got into that after a while because um early on I was just breaking records just for fun. And it's important to know that you would never like that cuz because you just enjoy and genuinely enjoy playing music and right. making people happy. Right. But you see how it's a business. The the the, the, the business part comes in. Yeah, so exactly. The, let's yeah. go. Let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah, man. You know, I um yeah, it was count countless amount of records that I was a part of yeah. um, at the at the growing stages. You know, I won't sit here and say that I was, you know, um, I was in the studio with them. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this, nah, you, you wrote was, that, you wrote that, yeah. yeah nah, you know what I mean? A, lo a lot of those records, they were actually they were they were good records. You know, and they already had whatever kind of following from their neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. you know, and particularly um, Millie Rock. Right. They from they from Gates or whatever, you know. Um, so they had the whole Gates going crazy. Right. I was the first DJ to to bring them to the club. Um, I brought them to Lust. We're going we gonna to find the footage. I brought them to Lust. Right there, yeah. <laughs> the footage is, the footage was, is very visible yeah. when they went Stupid. Yeah, I bought him the lust and um yeah, man. Um And then you hear it on Flex the next day, you know, and all right. that other shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, a couple weeks later, you, yeah, yeah. You, you it, it became worldwide. It becomes worldwide. It became yeah. worldwide, you know what I mean? And um, you know, it's it's a little story behind that, but it's cool. You know, you know, you got people that didn't believe that you know that it was going to do anything and then after they seen the reaction they like oh okay you know and then they believed but and then of course i get cut out you know yeah but um you know it comes with the game and that's when you're young and just don't really know what you're doing you know what i mean and um the business side of it the business side of this yeah. dj shit yeah, yeah it's man. like it's, it's, it's serious it's, it's serious it's not all about about being cool and he cool right and be cool but he lost out at 20 20 30 yeah, 000, 20, definitely. at the least 20 50 k you know what i'm saying like yeah. that's an a and r check right there right you know right. you feel if, what i'm saying had I, had I had i known exactly what i was doing because i was kind of like all over the place because i was so hot mm -hmm. and i was always doing my own thing mm -hmm. um as far as being an artist as well this is this a lot of different stuff that was going on had i known and had all my stuff lined up correctly right i probably would have landed an a r job somewhere or what probably would have got a twenty thirty thousand dollar check I, and i believe you know that i'm saying because a and r's were calling my phone after they started to see like yo after hey, you played guy, this, yeah, this yeah. guy knows what's going on yeah yeah you know what i mean it was certain people calling my phone i remember i even um i said something about a boogie yeah one time before he you know took off and mm -hmm. somebody from atlantic called me and was like yo stocks yo what you think about Abe? i'm like yo nah boy is i think he's going uh, uh. yeah and then before you know it he signed up well becky was out right that time my shit or yeah yeah that yeah. was yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was the that was the first one that got him you know the notoriety around the, around the city and you gotta understand when you're in brooklyn and you got these people rapping that shit word from word you know right. what i'm saying it's right. a dj that plays it yeah because they wasn't playing that on the radio. Right. You right. had to go to a nightclub yeah. to hear the hottest records. Mm -hmm. And that's normally, that's how it goes. When, when If the DJs in the clubs are playing it, that's when it gets on the radio. Right. You know, and I see a lot of, and this is for any artist that may be out there listening, don't try to rush to the radio. Because a lot of them like, yo, I want my song on the radio, I want my song on the radio. Yeah, you can get the song on the radio, and if you have it, you know, registered, you'll get it counted as a BDS spin, which is cool, which is yeah. not much money, you yeah. know, for one spin. But if you know, if if you have your song playing in the club, night after night, time after time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, in multiple clubs, because I could play a song here tonight, but there's thousands of other parties going on yeah. in Atlanta. There's yeah. another thousand parties going on in New York. So if your song is not being played in all of these clubs all at once, then you still have some work you to do. You still got work to do. You know what I mean? So, and I see some people get upset. Yo, you ain't playing my record, son. You ain't playing my record. Bro, first of all, I'm only one out of a million other DJs. Yeah. You know, let's get this song really hot mm -hmm. where everybody wants to play and it's a demand for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. So, once once again, yeah, the, the records were being, you know, um, they were already surfacing in the hood. Yeah. 
on people's that has to be first yeah. facebook yeah. and instagram and stuff yeah. like that and this is before it got the way it is now yeah you know what i mean of course but um it was already bubbling and then here goes stocks playing it in the spot like oh shit yo, yo. but here goes stocks playing it in the club bringing it back talking his shit over it mm-hmm. putting a hype on it you know what i'm saying right that's right. what makes it different so now when they hear it anywhere else is shit this is my shit now you know what right, i'm saying right so i want to talk about the dj stocks birthday series you know what i'm saying okay uh you've been throwing the biggest birthday parties in the city you know what i mean had some of the most some cele- of the biggest celebrity djs yes how did that come about like is that it just grew from the celebrity was it like a business thing or was it just a, like for the love um it was it shout was to myself i dj one of them he has about 30 of them, but I DJ one. <laughs> Shout out to you, bro. Yeah. yeah, that's a fact. Um, Yeah, man, it was something that I had um started. I can't remember what year it was, but um, I, I believe the, the first year I had did it, I did it at the Jumbala. And we did it like on a Wednesday. This is Brooklyn. This is yeah. vintage Brooklyn shit yeah. we're talking right now. Yeah. It was a you know a real big spot. Yeah. It was like on a Wednesday, like an off night. This is before people was partying on right. Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays like that. You know, we just took a chance. Yeah. Um, it rained bad that night. Um, it wasn't as, as successful as what we would want it to be, but it's cool. It is what it is. And then the next like the next year, um, we did a spot called Intramelli. And we still have it on on YouTube. Yeah. So, um, it was a small little spot that was a restaurant in the daytime, mm-hmm. and we turned into a <laughs> to, to a club. Um, we was actually supposed to do. I think it was supposed to be somewhere else that year. Facts. It was supposed to be somewhere else that year, and we didn't get to do the club. Um, whatever whatever club it was, I can't remember. But our my birthday party was in September. Yeah. And we actually had to move it. Burger season. Yeah. We moved it to October. Because we couldn't get we couldn't get the yeah 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 man it was crazy we could I forget what what was the issue, but it was so anticipated that right. people was like I mean every day we on social media talking about this party yeah every single day everybody's talking about yo born boss born boss is on the way yeah and it was it the was the born boss series was yeah. crazy I fly used yeah. to be crazy man it was it was definitely um it was it was just it felt like it was still virgo season when we did it in october you know and then um from that point on bro like we did it every year i used to do it with my boy e money bags I'm um, from Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and um, after a while, you know, he started to do his own thing. I forget what year it was, but we did. I mean, we did uh, Susie Wong. We okay. did all these different type of places, and eventually I started to do it on my own, me and Diddy. Yep. And it was big, man. We did Amnesia. We did freaking Canal Room, all these different. Canal Room. Yeah. Oh, the Canal Room was, that was the, I think that was one of the craziest ones. Rest in peace, Fred the Godson. Yeah, Fred um, was there. He pulled up to that, that yeah. club that night. I French, met him. French Montana came through. French Montana. Montana came through that night. Mm-hmm. Red um Red Cafe always supported you. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? He's a Virgo. Uh, He's a Virgo himself. Uh, but yo, Starks used to bring the city out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand how big this is for my show. Right. I got one of the biggest <laughs> DJs in the city. My boy lives in Atlanta now, you know what I mean? Um uh does the father thing, man. So how do you deal with being a DJ and a full time father? You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen that you didn't take any breaks mm-hmm. from the day that you said you was about to be a dad. Right. So, you know, a lot of DJs, and you know, you ain't got to put nobody out there, but a lot of DJs um, don't take care of their children, and right. they, because they are really successful, because this DJ thing takes a lot. Right. It takes a lot of um, attention, time. So, how do you balance that, bro? Um, I sacrifice. Yeah. You know I mean, I sacrifice and I put um, myself and my family first. You know, if if I if I can't get it done, then I just can't get it done. Right. But you know, I have a strong foundation. Um, shout out to my family, man. Shout out to my girl. Right. You know, shout out to her parents. Shout out to my parents. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I I see a lot of people. Sometimes they see my situation and they be like, "Yo, you lucky. You got help. You got help." You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I'm saying to myself, man, I'm blessed. Yeah. You know, it's more than being lucky. I'm just blessed to have such a large family. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you know, like right now, I, I left. I, I was gonna bring one, my oldest son with me because he likes this type of stuff. I was gonna, yeah. bring, but he fell asleep. But um, yeah. you know, they with their grandparents right now at the crib. You yeah. know what I mean, and I'm able to just come and do my thing, and then go back to the crib and be with them. You know, so it's all about balance, man. Right. In, in my in my personal opinion, it's it's life is all about balance. The balance, yeah. Anything, you know, if you're not balanced, then it's not gonna work. So let's go on the timeline real quick. Mm-hmm. So I know I mentioned, you know, back in the days, you'll see like six of the popping DJs on one party. Right. How was that pay like? 
I think a lot of people want to know that because you know you see so many DJs on a party and it's like how did they get paid? How did how did they spread love? And I know at that time it was all about getting the recognition and and, and you you really I think I think you took that for the most of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how was that about? What was that about like back in the days? Cuz that was just something that was like, damn, it's a lot of DJs. How they how they, who's getting paid? Pay for me was never a big deal. Okay. When I first started, I just wanted my name. Okay. I just wanted to get my name up. You Dope. know, and and then I I think I did a party one time and then the guy gave me like seventy five dollars or a hundred dollars, something like that. And I was like, Oh word, okay. I was I was I was hyped. Because yeah. I had never gotten a check and young. to DJ. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. I was like sixteen, seventeen, whatever it was. Yeah. And um somebody, you know, the guy gave me a couple dollars and from that point forward I looked at it as a business yeah. because like I said when I first came around with Sleepy and the rest of those guys yeah. they were already seasoned and doing their thing yeah. I just was just trying to just learn yeah. learn the game so I didn't I wasn't looking at it from a money aspect I just loved the art of DJ and I loved music and I loved the party that yeah. was one thing about me I, I, I always was going to the party anyway yeah, so yeah, I definitely. said okay I'm gonna go to this party definitely turn it up yeah. bring my CDs and then I'm gonna try to sneak my way in a set wait 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 so now, you know, everything is CDJ. So you definitely was vinyl and CD. Yeah. Let's talk about that time. Like, because a lot of DJs don't remember uh-huh. carrying a bag full of CDs. Yeah. That's what we used to do back in the oh, days. Definitely. What was that process like? Like, how, did you have to record mad songs on one CD and then mark and write, write every yeah. song on it? Yeah. When I first started out, it was vinyl. Yeah. Um, when I actually was able to step outside, it was vinyl and CDs. Yeah. So CDs was taken over, so I didn't really... A lot of it wasn't even not that I didn't want to do it, but a lot of people, a lot of the clubs, and whoever was bringing the sets at the time wasn't even bringing the turntables like that anymore, yeah, because they saw it as being more this convenient. is real, shit right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they saw it as being more convenient to for DJs to just bring CDs, yeah, you know, instead of having a, a hundred crates, a hundred crates, you yeah, would have you know, a hundred CDs, you know, what I'm saying with a million songs on there, you know, what I mean, so, yo, um, that was a time, man, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely was, yeah, so yeah, man, I remember, you know, LimeWire, yeah, you know, de- yeah, LimeWire was definitely the, the, the platform of choice, yeah, you know, at the time, at that time. Time, yep. And you download, you know, whatever records you had. Um, at, before I even had a, a a a computer, I used to have one of my guys mm-hmm. that I went to school with, my boy on um, P. He used to, I used to give him all the list of songs that I needed. Yeah, and he would he would burn CD burn the CD. Yeah, that, that was love, man. You know, I think it was a Window Media's player. It was the only shit that was burning CDs yeah, at the time, yeah, man. This is the time because a lot of young DJs don't remember these things. And it was crazy. I found my Technique twelve hundreds. I had a compact um, laptop that I found in my in my crib because I don't really throw stuff away. And I went to my guy, my tech guy, and I was like, yo, you know, let's see what we can do about this. Yeah. And he brought it back to life, bro. And I and I opened it the other day, man. I mean the old Lime Wire and all that stuff was still on there. Like all of my my, my old playlists and all Yeah, fuck around be a uh, virus on that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Lime Wire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. DJ Starks, man, I wanna thank you for coming through today, bro. Like no you know what I'm saying? Um uh Multi city DJ right now. Yes, sir. like I know in Atlanta, it's a, it's a disparity on what's going on. So, how do you feel about the hookah game right now? Hookah versus dance is the question. Mm. Do you feel like people are dancing now, or people are smoking more? It's more about the vibe, or people are just say. The question is hookah versus dancing. Yeah, man. I think nowadays, I think everything. First and foremost, everything shifted. Yeah. Okay. It's not the same like it once was. That's why when you go and you see and you have a good night, you know, people speak about it for a week straight. Like, yo, this party was, uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Because it's not the same. You know, I even got the DJ Instagram because I was he was lit. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, things like that. So, um, you know, in my opinion, bro, everything is more laid back, cool, calm, collective. I'm, you know, I'm going to wear my expensive shoes. I don't want to get them dirty. I'm going to stand on this couch. You know, and we have How do we stuff. change that? Because the DJs need love, too. So when you yeah. see somebody, when you're playing hits, and you see somebody in a chair, mm-hmm. they bobbing their head stocks, and you know you're doing your thing, but they just not dancing how they used to dance back in 2003. Right. How does that make you feel? The fact that I know that there, it's it's a time and place for everything, right? You know what I mean. So if you want to go to one of those type of events, you know, it's a it's a certain kind of environment that you're gonna be in. Right. You know, if you go into you know a premier spot in downtown Atlanta, 
that you know it's a premier spot, you know, you know that they come in there to spend their money and to stand on tables and you know yeah. and, and vibe. You know what I mean? So, you, but you know, now back in New York, you go to a, a reggae event. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily space, right? It's, it's a more, big space. It's more they spaces. You know, they don't really do a bunch of tables and um couches. And stuff. I'm gonna challenge you, people. I'm gonna challenge the owners to make clubs with dance floors now because they make it for tables. Mm-hmm. And you know, tables make money. Right, and I get it. And, I got it. And I was gonna say that, yeah, because I had this conversation not too long ago with somebody. I can't remember, but at the same time, it's a business, right? You know what I mean? So yeah, I get it. We want people to dance and have fun, but the business one people. The business, if you got a couch and you can make freaking twenty, thirty thousand dollars off just, of that, just because that couch looks like you yeah. know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> my my first time ever going to live on a Sunday. You know, we sp- we had to spend a minimum like twenty thousand, and yeah. we were all the way up top, <laughs> yeah. all the way up top for twenty grand. And it was like, yo, if you want to be down here, it was like fifty, a hundred. Like these people was making so much money. So, on a business aspect, why would you want to get rid of that? I could do this show for so long with you, Stark, because I didn't even <laughs> do the Miami shit I used yeah, to do in yeah, Miami. Because yeah, you just brought something to my mind. Yeah, yeah I used to kill Miami. Kill it. In the in <laughs> kill it. Man, y'all used to kill Miami, bro. You know what I'm saying? People used to spend money. They used to book a flight. They used to book a hotel because DJ Starks and Diddy had events out there. We bought Rick Ross. I'm yeah, y'all we brought, brought Jake Eric, Yo. Man, you name it. I'm, I'm talking about So, Jake. y'all already know we're going to bring him back for another show, man. This is yeah. the DJ's Need Love 2 show. We're going to end it right there, right yes, there, man. Sir. Part 2 coming out real soon, man. DJ Starks, DJ Batty, yo, we out, baby. Thank you, man.